we're back. Hello, everybody. It's Kevin. And Brian. And we're the Horror Guys. Both of us. Yep. Horror Guys. Both That's right Plural, there. yes. 79th episode, and believe it or not, this time, we've got... Horror Movies. Who knew? <laughs> I knew. Yeah, this time we've got the Revenge of the Creature from but the Black Lagoon. Second in the series. Yeah. And what else? We got uh, the Vampire Lovers and a short called Eden. Yep. Yep. Newish movie, Digging Up the Marrow. And the documentary, Why Horror? Why indeed. Why? Why would anybody want to watch scary movies? Beats me. No. I guess we'll find out. We should talk about these. We should. Yeah. Are you ready? I'm ready. Well, here yeah. we go. So first up, we had Revenge of the Creature from 1955, another yeah. Universal classic. Well, of Universal's the last creature. classic, basically. The mm -hmm. last monster. Yeah. This time they, they go back and they capture the gill man and they take him to an aquarium. And they treat him well, they feed him great yeah, dinners, uh -huh. they get him a good girlfriend. He's a big hit and he's happy forever at the uh, end. Yeah, uh-huh. Living, uh, living high on the hog. And, yeah. Would have been a short film. <laughs> Less dramatic. Yeah. So did you like this one? Yeah, I did. Not as much as the first one, but I yeah. liked it. Uh-huh. Yeah. It was good. Yeah, this is a continuation of the story. Directed by Jack yeah. Arnold, same guy did the first one. Apparently there's still just one creature. Which they never really explain, because yeah. it's, you know, didn't come from a vacuum. It came from parents. Or Nobody ever said had, it was immortal. Maybe had siblings, or... Yeah. It seems to be really tough. The family <laughs> from the Black Lagoon. Really tough and long-lived, yeah. Isn't that yeah. where the Sea Monkeys cartoon came from? Oh, maybe, yeah. Directed by Jack Arnold, the guy who did the first one. Written by Martin Berkeley and William Allen. Stars John Agar, Laurie Nelson, John Bromfield... Completely recast the movie, except for the boat captain, which was odd. Mm -hmm. Runtime, hour and 22. Link in the show notes if you want to pick this one up yourself. Odd that the captain would want to go back <laughs> after what he went through in the first one. Money's money. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> when you got a boat that beat up, you got to take the jobs you can get. <laughs> well, we get an overhead view of, the, of a tributary of the upper Amazon. I assume it really is the Amazon. I don't know. We shift to the Rita. The same boat from the previous movie. This time, they'll be returning to the Black Lagoon in the morning. Mm -hmm. The mission is to capture the Gill Man. And we get a quick overview about evolution and the theory over how this creature can still exist unchanged from millions of years ago. Although they never actually admit that it reproduces or that there's a Mrs. Creature out there. And, you know... And we only see the one. The way he acts, yeah. maybe there isn't a Mrs. Creature yeah, out that's there. That's why he's so cranky. Yeah, yeah and yeah. just that desperate. Mm-hmm. Well, they arrive and lower a man down this time in what looks like an armored diving suit. So much for the skimpy swim trunks and an air tank. This oh, guy's wearing those come later. big old diving helmet. There's plenty of skimpy bathing suits. Yeah. yeah. Well, the creature attacks immediately. He knows what he's in for now. Mm -hmm. He goes for the man's air hose, but the men on the boat start shooting, and he swims away unharmed. They then dynamite the water, and that works pretty quickly. Stuns him pretty good. Yeah, he flows yeah. to the surface unconscious. Well, now the creature's in a coma and has flown to a lab in California where he'll be in the care of Professor Cleet Ferguson. You just don't hear people named Cleet anymore. No, not so much, yeah. Short for Cletus. And um, the California's, uh, the, that's, uh, I believe it's Florida. Is it, Cal is it yes, Florida? Yes, okay. yes, because the next movie takes place it's in It's got Florida. palm trees. It must be California. No, no, it's Florida, South Florida. And it does make more sense considering the next movie, you're right. Yeah. <clears throat> well, they unload him at the big Ocean Harbor Aquarium, and he finally wakes up. He nearly escapes immediately, but they net him again and chain him to the pool. Yeah, there's quite a dramatic scene with him fighting with the, and fighting with the guys and trying to get loose. And He's rough. Again. Yeah, yeah, he is. Well, Ferguson quickly meets Helen, and he likes her. The Gill Man meets Helen, and, and likes he her. likes her. <laughs> and he keeps staring at her through the window of the pool, so you know he's got a thing going. Mm -hmm. Cleet and Helen get into the pool to feed and train the Gill Man, and the creature gets kind of excited. Mm -hmm. Well, they start performing various scientific tests on the Gill Man, and it turns out he's closer to human than fish. Just a hair away, genetically. And he's very smart. Very. He yeah. kills Cleet's assistant, Joe, and escapes. He heads straight for the ocean and is free. 
Soon he's sighted nearly everywhere, and the Navy is hunting him down. They assume he's slowly heading back to the Amazon. But, but he hasn't but, gone back to the Amazon. Yeah. He's hanging out across the street from Helen's motel. <laughs> <laughs> he kills Helen's dog. Mm. And the next morning, Helen and Cleet take off on a boat bound for Cleet's hometown, which he's never specified. And we see the creature following them. When they arrive, they dress up and go to the lobster house, where there's a huge crowd. Everybody having a good time until... The gill man walks in right behind them. Mm -hmm. He grabs Helen and dives off the pier. The police put out an APB on the creature, and a huge man hunt gets underway. Gill man hunt. Gill man hunt, yes. Mm -hmm. They finally find Helen on the beach, and the creature comes out of the water to pick her back up. He's spotted. Cleet grabs Helen, and the cops start shooting. Once again, the creature sinks to the bottom, not to be seen until the next film. Mm -hmm. Well, this one has Clint Eastwood, easily recognizable in his very first film role, mm -hmm. as a young college student in the lab who has trouble with a lost rat. Uncredited. He does have dialogue, but he's uncredited. I wonder what the point yeah. of that scene was. The character's not important. The lost rat's not important. Uh, very minor lighten, comic relief. Lighten the mood a bit, because you know, yeah. it's kind of a grim movie. I wonder yeah. if he knew somebody to get that, that scene. Maybe. Yeah. <clears throat> somebody owed him a favor or something? Yeah, it doesn't seem like it was an know. important scene. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyone who has issues with SeaWorld will get pretty <laughs> riled up with the conditions the Gill Man is forced to live in, uh -huh. which were probably based on somewhat realistic conditions at the time. A tiny radius of chain in the middle of a not very large pool. And they probably didn't feed him anything in the month or so it would have taken to get to the from the Amazon to Florida. They feed him there, right? Fish, Once he wakes fishes. up. Yeah, fishies. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to feed an unconscious fish man. Mm-hmm. Uh, and one thing that is never mentioned, the mm -hmm. Amazon is a river. The rivers are freshwater. Mm -hmm. Yet freshwater fish. Ocean is Ocean is salty. salt water. Yeah. Apparently, it's salt water. They you he do can not thrive in both. No. He can thrive in both. Some sharks can thrive in both. Not for very long they can. There's some fishies. Not for very thrive. long they can. Yes, they can. Well, Show me yeah, an octopus that lives in the lake. I know. Show there's me a shark whole, that lives in the there's river. There's the whole science of salt and osmotic pressure and all that. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't work. But it works for him. All right, because magic. Because he's special. Because 1950s science yeah. in a movie. Yeah. Okay, so this was not as good as the first one, and it looked a little bit cheaper as well. If you like the first one, you won't hate this, but it is a step down in quality. Totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it was okay. And watch yeah, it's all right. You should collect the whole set. If you like creatures and lagoons and, yeah, yeah, watery things. Yeah. Which takes us to the Hammer Horror Film of the Week. So last, the week before last we had, which one was it? Scars of Dracula. Now it was last week. Blood of, of Dracula. Blood of Dracula. Was it? Yeah. Taste the Blood of taste, Dracula. Taste the Blood of Dracula. Then like we the had the Scars of Dracula. Of Dracula. <laughs> and now we have the Vampire Lovers. 1970 was a Big year for Hammer. Busy All three year. of them were from <laughs> Hammer in 1970. Yep. And this one doesn't have Christopher Lee in it, but it almost did. It had a role that was written for Christopher Lee, mm -hmm. that he was busy doing something else. And it would have been another easy role for him. <laughs> yeah, the, the number of lines for that Easier guy. Easier than yeah. Dracula, even. This guy really didn't do much Yeah, he, he didn't say anything. He just looked ominous. Mm -hmm. Okay, Vampire Lovers, 1970, what'd you think? It was okay. It was definitely very it, much it, it okay. Was, it yeah. was, I saw this and it was okay. <laughs> of the three vampire movies of 1970, this is number three. My least favorite. Yes. Yeah, mine too. Yeah. Yeah. And talk about a misleading poster. I notice in this poster there's this buff guy in his underwear chained to a wall being threatened by a vampirist. <laughs> At, At no, point, no point is there a buff guy in his underwear chained to a wall. I don't remember any guys being threatened at all. Barely, yeah. It's it's all about the girls. Women on women it's in very this very girl one. on girl in yeah. this one. Yeah, which I don't see how this got by the censors. Like, in, Narrowly, in 19, I imagine. In 1970, that. yeah. It's pretty tame by today's standards. It's and, really obvious what's going on, but you don't really see much. Is much more accepted nowadays, but in 1970, this was kind of racy and shocking and and not the norm. And, yeah. Well, I used to watch these kind of movies, all the Hammer movies, late night on Saturdays on TV. Mm -hmm. I don't think I ever saw this one. And yeah, I can't imagine. Not. I can imagine <laughs> yeah. why. Yeah. yeah. Directed by Roy Ward Baker, written by Sheridan Lefanu and Harry Fine, stars Ingrid Pitt, Pippa Steele, Madeline Smith, 
one hour, 31 minutes. Link in the show notes if you are interested. Did you like it, though? <clears throat> well, we've already had that conversation. It's all right. Yeah. It's all right. It was okay. Yeah. It was the least mm-hmm. of the three, but I don't regret watching it. Yeah. There's, there's oh, far worse oh, movies for, we've seen. Yes, yes. Yeah. Recently. I, even. I was still entertained. I mean, decently entertained. It's not bad. It just wasn't for me. Yeah. We see Joachim von Hartog writing a letter about the supernatural happenings of the Karnstein. The Karnsteins, as he says. Mm-hmm. We get a man with a voiceover narration doing some kind of battle with murderers from beyond the grave. Which turns out to be a vampire with a shroud. Vampires can only turn, return to the grave with their shroud. He finds a shroud on the ground and takes it. He then waits with a sword in hand, and a pretty girl comes up to take back the shroud. Want the shroud? Come get it. Come get it. She come is, get it. Yep. She's about to bite him. <laughs> like luring a kitten with a string. Come go. Come go. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Look what I got. But then, this. but then he's very shocked that it's a very beautiful woman he was expecting something a little more hideous yeah so that really throws him so she sneaks up and gets ready to bite him but he decapitates pulls it out at the last moment and slice his sword he pulls out his sword at the right 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 and and (coughs) you forget what kind of movie this is yeah and credits roll and and somebody in the sound studio sliced into a cabbage for that sound effect that's the trivia the head slicing (laughs) is a cabbage (laughs) shock And the whole thing about the shroud, mm-hmm. he makes such a big deal about the shroud here in the introduction. And then they don't anymore. It's there. There's no shrouds later on. It's almost like that was two weird. separate like, things. Yeah, like two separate movies. <laughs> yeah, the way he was going, it's like the whole secret is they in the started shroud. in one direction and then completely changed after the credits. <laughs> None of the later vampires even had shrouds Nothing that we mentioned. know of. Yeah. Okay, so the general, who looks an awful lot like Peter Cushing. They aged him down this time. He looked younger with the dark hair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The general is putting on a fancy party for his daughter's birthday. And weren't they all well dressed? Well, they were. Oh, that yes. was a fancy, a, fancy party. Yeah. That's the kind you had. If you did you see the size of that house? Yeah, it was a yeah. That was no house. That was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not just a general. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> well, the countess comes to the party and introduces her daughter Marcella was instantly popular with young officers at the party because she's very good looking. Mm -hmm. The Countess almost immediately has to leave, but asks the General to watch over Marcella until her return. Which you'd think that might be an hour or two, but she never comes back. Yeah. His own daughter, Laura, becomes Marcella's friend. So the General, you know, fortunately there's a spare room or two in this, you know, little modest house. (laughs) It's a palace, and he's got hundreds (laughs) of Tells one of the servants to make up a room for her, and it's like, you know, is gigantic. <laughs> I'm gonna go stay at somebody's house just until. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Laura wakes up screaming in the middle of the night after dreaming about a huge cat. Time passes and she has more nightmares, and she starts getting weaker and weaker. Almost as if someone was siphoning her life force. No, the doctor blames anemia. Oh, okay. Natural causes, perfectly natural. Yes. At one point, Marcilla comforts. She just needs some meat, and what do you say, meat and? Milk? I think we meat and milk. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Definitely meat. Yeah. <laughs> it's these it's these young women, they just don't eat properly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's all it is. Well one of them's not eating properly. <laughs> yeah, the other one certainly is. <laughs> At one point Marcilla comforts the sickly Laura with a kiss. And then another kiss. Mm-hmm. And then quite a lot of kissing. Girl on girl. Mm-hmm. Not long after Laura is dead. They find bite marks on her chest. Mm-hmm. Womp womp. Yep. And then they can't find Marcella. Where did she go? This vampire doesn't bite him on the neck. (laughs) She likes cream with her blood. (laughs) Well, the general gets depressed and goes to visit his friend, Baron von Hartog. Well, the countess is later on somewhere else. The countess's carriage has an accident, and Mr. Morton invites the countess's daughter, Carmilla, to come stay with with them to recuperate. Carmilla is, of course, Marcilla, whom we met earlier. They travel around and change. Not very names. far. They don't travel. Yeah, it was the old days. They didn't have you know internet and texting and. You know, well, she becomes. They, they get away with it. For, <laughs> yeah. She becomes friends with Morton's daughter Emma. Emma and Carmilla get naked and undress in front of each other quite a lot. They roll around on the bed together. They're just good friends. Nothing going on there. <laughs> Soon, Emma starts dreaming about a great cat in her room, and it's as big as a wolf. The general servant comes to call on Emma, but Carmilla has bewitched the governess who sends him away. 
because he could identify Carmilla as Marcella since he saw her at the general's house. At the party. The butler calls the doctor to look in on Emma against the governess's orders. For some reason, now the governess is getting weird. Mm -hmm. The doctor notices booby bite marks, just like on the deceased Laura had. The doctor puts garlic in the room and a cross around Emma's neck. The butler suspects that the governess is behind Emma's illness. Carmilla comes in a little later, sees the cross and garlic, and she slowly backs out of the room. Like, uh uh-oh. And she's troubled by those, but she does go out in the daylight, you notice. She does go out in the daylight, Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, Daylight is not an issue. Yeah. Well, she catches the doctor on the way home and drains him dry. The innkeeper explains to Mr. Norton about the Karnsteins and Baron von Hartog. Morton goes out to find the general, and hey, he runs into the general and von Hartog on the road, carrying the dead doctor's body with them. Hmm. Morton, van Hartog, and the general all then head up to the Karnstein castle. Meanwhile, Carmilla is working hard to get the servants to remove the garlic from Emma's room. Renton, the butler, doesn't suspect her of anything still. But Carmilla bites him, and now Renton is her slave as well. Well, the three old men find Marcilla slash Camilla, Carmilla's grave and dig it up. Uh, the coffin, however, is somewhere else. Hmm. Carmilla takes Emma away, at, saying that they're going to go to her home. Carmilla Your then, place or mine? Yeah. <laughs> Your crypt or mine. <laughs> Carmilla drains the governess and Renton just as the general servant rushes in to save Emma. He prays, and Carmilla just vanishes into thin air which is a trick we haven't seen before. No. The three old men then see Carmilla wandering through the woods and follow her back to the castle. They find the coffin buried under the floor. The general volunteers to do the staking since his daughter's already dead. Emma, miles away, can feel what's going on with her connection to Carmilla as they stake Carmilla and behead her. The end. And Is it uh, Camilla or Carmilla? I thought it was Carmilla. So did I. Okay. Yeah, yeah Carmilla. Go ahead. Um, and while all this is going on, the the mother doesn't really seem to do much except put introduce them. Put, yeah, put Carmilla in place, and you know, uh, and there's this guy on horseback who keeps popping up, like a puppet master watcher kind of guy, and they never explain who he is. Mm-hmm. If he's the head vampire. That and was my assumption. Carmilla is just one of his minions. and Well, this is supposed to be one of three. So there's mm-hmm. more movies in the series. So maybe we'll find out later. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the first Hammer film that I can think of that had very obvious full frontal nudity in it. Mm-hmm. It's really blatant, not a bit subtle. And there's a lot of lesbian subtext and even some not-so-sub-subtext. It's more obvious. not very sub. It's, it's all right text. <laughs> it's there, Love yeah. lesbian text. Yeah. Yeah, it's but all super tame compared in, to modern films. And in the trivia, too, the actress decided, though, that she, from her point of view, she was playing the character as asexual. Just, you know, these were... She'll flirt with anybody things, if they got yeah, blood. Things that she wanted to feed on. You know, not, you know, she didn't think of her character as a lesbian meat is for eating not for other things exactly yeah yeah so but it came across as pretty lesbian yeah and it must have been really shocking in 1970 yeah kind of tame today Mm -hmm. we never get any explanation about who the countess or the mysterious man in black is but it's obvious that at least he is a vampire you see fangs at one point Mm -hmm. presumably he's the head of the vampire family but not only does he not get caught he never even speaks at the film it was a perfect role for Christopher Lee. Would Why he couldn't come in and sit money. on a horse a couple of times, easy I don't money. know. He probably could have filmed it in one day. <laughs> Certainly could have. Yeah. He just looks at whatever's going on. He just looks at whatever's happening ominously a few times during the film. Flashes his fangs, smiles. Yeah. yeah. All the performances here are good, but Peter Cushing is completely wasted mm-hmm. and only gets about 10 minutes of actual screen time. Yeah, not much. The time. real star here would be Ingrid Pitt, who gets all the best scenes and alternates between being an innocent girl and a demonic bloodsucker. And I can see why Hammer used her in many of their her, their subsequent films. They did use her in a lot of things. Mm-hmm. She's very good. But yeah, and uh, yeah, Peter Cushing got like top or second billing. and Of course, because he's Peter Cushing. Yeah, he didn't yeah. do much, though. Yeah. All right, did you watch a short film this week? Yeah, one called Eden. Yeah. It was really good. Any idea why it was called Eden? 
I'm not sure on that, no. Okay, I yeah. Didn't, I didn't catch anything that was a direct reference to Eden. No, I didn't either. But it was really good. Directed by Bobby Costin, starring Bobby Costin, Benjamin Abiola, Charles Breaks the Third, and Taylor Drake. Runtime, 5.55, five, almost six minutes. And you did like it. Mm -hmm. I liked it, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So three young guys are out on a night on the town. And and he meets the girl of his dreams, and they live happily ever after. Oh, wait, it's not that one. No. No, no that, that's, that's a different story. Yeah. That's not what happened in this one. <laughs> one of the guys dropped his car keys, and the other two wait by the car while he goes back looking for his keys. And he doesn't come back. Did he find the girl of his dreams and have a better time than expected? Or was it something more sinister? Hmm. Find out. It's five, Gotta six find minutes out by long. Watching it. Mm -hmm. It's short, well filmed, and looks great. Mm -hmm. The story is pretty predictable, really, but it's well done and interesting. And I definitely recommend you invest six minutes in it. Yep. It's good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, check it out. And then we saw a documentary. Why horror? Question Why? Mark. Why horror? Why? Why would anybody subject themselves to some of these movies? <laughs> well, and he tries to find out the scientific answers to that, and you know, you know, he, he probes deeply. Yeah. yeah. Directed by Nicholas Kleiman, Rob Lindsay. Written by Lob, Rob Lindsay. Uh, stars Alexander Aha, Chris Alexander, and Dave Alexander. And mostly uh, Tal Zimmerman is the main guy, who's mm -hmm. not actually listed first in the stars. must be alphabetical. Hour and 21 minutes, and you can see this one on... Shutter, Shutter, and also Amazon has it. So there's mm -hmm. a link in the show notes for the Amazon. So, did you like it? I did. Mm -hmm. Didn't love it. Liked it. Yeah, I didn't love it, didn't didn't hate it. It was very middle of the road. Wasn't in-depth enough. I didn't feel like there was enough new that I got from it. It was too much about him. Yeah, a lot about him. There was some yeah. science and general stuff in there, but... Mm -hmm. I don't care why he likes horror. Clips and history and information was a little lacking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, things like no Compared cats. to like the horror noir a couple of weeks ago with all those clips, that was just yeah. fun to watch. Yeah, and history and, and see, people oh, analyzing I haven't seen that. I want to see that. I want to see that. And people talking about why this is historically significant. You yeah. know, why King Kong was what it was. And, you know, and things, this one here is like just that. a little more superficial, I thought. Film clips to be shown film clips at certain points is all. Not about the movies at all. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so one of the opening lines, ask the viewer, what is it about horror that makes fans react the way they do? And Tal Zimmerman, who just self-identifies as a horror fan, he's not an expert or critic or anything, explains why he and so many others love the horror genre. And there are interviews with directors, philosophers, artists, actors, anthropologists, writers, and about everyone else involved with the genre. At one point, Tal gets into an MRI machine and watches horror films while he's in there to see what it does to the brain. Turns out it's a tension reliever. For him, anyway. Well, because he's so acclimated to it was the scientist theory, too. Yeah. You know. And then him and his mother, who doesn't like horror, got into a machine. And uh, what was it? He was calmer than she was. Which oh, yeah. probably doesn't surprise anyone. He's used to that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, there's a section on there about how the Halloween holiday has influenced and corrupted the Mexican Day of the Dead holiday. Why little Mexican kids now dress up as Frankenstein and Dracula instead of the traditional dead people. Mm -hmm. And the whole point is you pay your respects to the actual dead so they won't kill you. Why would you want to do that to a monster who's planning to kill you? Mm -hmm. Dracula and Frankenstein mm -hmm. aren't good monsters. They're the bad guys. <laughs> so yeah. It kind of corrupts the Day of the Dead plan. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. And then it moves into the gothic horror novels of the 18th and 19th century, and it continues up to the video boom of the 80s, and how suddenly a giant theatrical distributor was no longer an absolute necessity, and indie films got big. Mm -hmm. Of course, nowadays, they didn't mention this in the, in the thing, but now with streaming and video games, the market is larger than ever, and just about anybody can make a horror film. Grab a camera and make one. That's all it takes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, for some, t <laughs> yeah, that's not always a good thing. <laughs> if you think you made a good one, send us an email. We'd probably like to see it. Yeah, yeah. We might regret saying that sometimes, <laughs> but yeah, we'll take a look. Hmm. Okay, and that's pretty much it. There's not a lot to say about this other than what it is. It, it tells about yeah. There's why not really a plot like or anything. Yeah, there's, there's no story to break down. No spoilers. Yeah. 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 One of the quotes in the movie is, "We don't kill people for fun anymore." 
and they're showing like the old Coliseum where people used to, you know, battle lions and kill each other with swords. No, you can see it at the theater. We don't release those. We don't kill people for fun theater. anymore. Now we create movies that kill people. Mm-hmm. I was expecting a fairly standard documentary with lots of film clips and medical discussion in this case, but this is actually really more about what the title says. Why do people like the scary stuff? Unfortunately, Tal Zimmerman mostly talks about himself and his own childhood, which I guess it's entertaining if you're his mother. His mother's in this quite a bit, by the way. But my childhood was nothing like that, and so it's kind of hard to relate. I'm sure his experience isn't close to yours either. It's not typical. Mm -hmm. And I'd say a full quarter or a third of the film is about him personally and not horror in itself. So I think it's a little bit... Let's say self-indulgent. It's a it's a vanity work. It certainly a little, is. A little bit of a vanity job. I mean, there's enough in here to make it interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, but it's even, not a really good interesting. And even the stuff about him was, you know, not boring. It was, you know, it's all right. Yeah. He used to wear monster makeup <laughs> and make bullet holes on his brother's head. And okay, yeah, yeah I know lots of people that do those things, and they're like in their forties. <laughs> <laughs> There's not really a lot to describe about the film, but if you are interested in an introspective and psychological and entertaining reasons why someone might be a horror fan, then this one is definitely worth watching. Check it out. Yeah. And then we saw another sort of documentary. Not really. Not a, really. A fulumentary. <laughs> Digging up the marrow. We had a big discussion about what is a mockumentary. Not a mockumentary. I guess mockumentary really is funny. Yeah. Mo- this is a fauxumentary. <laughs> it's, it's faux. It's fake. Like Blair Witch. <laughs> well, that wasn't really... A, that was more found footage. Well, it was presented like a documentary. She was making a documentary. Yeah. They just placed it together okay. after the fact. Yeah. Well, this is a sort of maybe more of a behind-the-scenes thing of how they were making their movie they were going to make a movie about this thing and we get to see how that happened mm-hmm. anyway 2015's digging up the marrow did you like it i did i liked it a lot i like this a lot yes i yeah. think this is the best thing this week mm-hmm. yeah i, I like this one yeah and i'd never heard about it it popped up as a trailer on shutter i believe and we ended up watching it there and mm-hmm. i'd never heard of it well, and it's Ray weird. Wise is in the trailer, and I'm figuring, oh, he's. For, I'll bet he's in that for five minutes, but no, let's watch it no, anyway. He's in it a lot. Yeah, yeah it's, he's the main star. Well, and it's weird because, and that's what why it's a weird documentary thing because Ray Wise plays a character named William Decker. He's not playing Ray Wise. All the other main people in it are playing themselves, which grays that documentary <laughs> you know, definition. You know? Well, part of the trivia right away. <laughs> Is that uh, Adam Green is a director, and he wrote, it really is, <laughs> and he wrote and stars in this, and it's he's pre- according to the movie, this is all real. He found out about this guy who sent him a submission, which is true. He actually got a submission from some guy with a book like this, and he gave him the idea for this movie. Yeah, yeah. But then they figured eventually they were going to find out if they went with some unknown actor as the Decker that they would get backlash because it's all fake, mm-hmm. like Blair Witch. People thought it was all real at the beginning, and then there was a lot of backlash when people found out it was all actors. So they said, well, forget that. Let's just cast a really well-known actor in the main part, and then people will know it's just a movie. There won't be that backlash. I guess. Yeah. Worked for me. I watched it because he was in it. I mean, well, yeah. I wouldn't have yeah. watched it if it had been a bunch of no, but I would have said, oh, look, another found footage, and turned right over to something else. Yeah. Ray but Wise, it was really good. Ray Wise really, really was good in that role. Yeah. Written and directed by Adam Adam Green, stars Ray Wise, Adam Green, Will Barrett, hour and 29 minutes, Shudder has it, Amazon has it, maybe other places too. And we start out watching interviews of numerous celebrities and pseudo-celebrities talking about their love of movie monsters. Just like the documentary we just told you about. Mm-hmm. Same kind of thing. Yeah. We then cut to the Aries Scope movie studio and talk to this guy named Adam Green, who turns out is a director and writer who's made lots of real-world, well-known horror films. Machete is the first one that comes to mind. He did the Machete series. And Machete 2. Yeah. Yeah. Uh (laughs) And throughout the story, we see cameos by people that he works with and worked with on these other films. And just tons of other directors and people in the business. Yeah, there's a lot of people in this. Mm -hmm. He talks about stuff that people send him, like line drawings and crazy books. And he talks about this one... uh, with this one crazy book 
But we'll get to that in a minute. But William Ducker sent to him. Yeah, we see a lot of scenes from their real-life movie productions, from Machete and the other, Frozen and some other movies. One such crazy book is from this guy named William Decker, a guy who claims he knows where real monsters live, and he wants Adam to make a film about it. Hmm. Adam is impressed enough with the guy's submission that he wants to film the subject of Decker's story. Actually, all of that, if you read the trivia, everything I just said is actually true. It really happened. <laughs> Some guy sent this book, and he was interested. So we then shift to cuts of an interview filmed, filmed over several days with retired detective William Decker. He talks about children born with birth defects who just vanish from society. He says most of them have gone on to this place to thrive. They're a hundred yards beneath the surface. They kind of have a whole world down there. Interconnected cities and tunnels where they're all gathering and gathering strength and yeah, reproducing together. And, yeah. Kind of like Midian and from the Clive Barker. Nightbreed. We, we both thought of that, Nightbreed. Yeah. Yeah. Immediately yeah. that uh-huh. comes to if you've seen yeah. If you've seen Nightbreed, mm-hmm. this is kind of that in that, a different, a different that viewpoint I, that of the idea. same thing. Yeah, yeah. uh-huh. No. Could be exactly the same thing, just different different point of view characters. Mm-hmm. Less magic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Well, we just don't see the magic. So yeah. when he was well, young, Decker, when Decker was young, he saw a kind of serpent-faced man in a lumber yard. After that, he found others that hid in the woods each night. He found the entrance to their hiding place, and he called it the Marrow, which is an odd name. you don't want to get too close to the hiding place, because they... They'll, they'll cover it up and then get a, yeah. new, a new entrance. Never and, see them again. Yeah, so you got to tread carefully when you're hunting them down. Very yeah. secretive. Mm-hmm. So they go out there, past the old cemetery and deeper into the woods on the other side. Decker seems a little crazy, but maybe not so crazy that he couldn't be on the level. Mm-hmm. He's very evasive about his family, and he has a padlock door in his house, so there are some red flags going up. Decker keeps seeing things out in the woods, but nobody else seems to see anything, either, even with the camera on. The camera lights are off. He won't let the cameras be seen. So, yeah, you don't, you don't see anything. Not at first. Then they turn the lights on, and they all see it. Yeah. It's real. <laughs> yeah, so then they wire up the cemetery with numerous cameras and install a floodlight that supplies enough light to hopefully film one of these people. Decker warns that, that just like everywhere else, some of these creatures are dangerous. Not most of them, but, but some, some are. are. Mm-hmm. Before long, they start catching monsters on camera. There's a lot of them. Mm-hmm. Adam then has to leave on a month-long horror convention tour. Other directors start laughing when Adam tells them about Decker. Turns out he's approached them all at one time or another, <laughs> and they all know Decker's crazy. Can't believe ah, you, you fell believe for, for it, that? Adam. You fell for yeah, that? sucker. <laughs> so Decker's been lying to them. But he's also clearly got a secret. Mm -hmm. Still, Adam wants to believe. And sometimes it's hard to believe. Tell you what, by the time it's over... You'll believe. He'll believe. (laughs) Okay, so the whole thing is done in the form of found footage mixed with a documentary. Decker's initial explanation made it sound just like the secret word of the night breed from the 1980s. Mm -hmm. Ray Wise has never been bad in anything, and this is no exception. When I heard he was starring in a low-budget horror <laughs> film, I assumed he'd be in it for five or ten minutes tops. Yeah, one of those things where they bring him in for, you know... Well, I a, heard a Bruce day. Willis is mm. in some something that's on TV or the f- movies right now. Yeah. The, Bruce Willis, he's right there on the cover, Bruce Willis and this girl cop. 99% of the movies, he's in like one scene. <laughs> it, it's for name recognition. That's what they often do. Yeah, that's these. what they do. Yeah. And that's what I thought they were doing here. Yeah. But it's not the case. He really is integral to the plot and a major character. He gets lots of screen time. Yeah. And there's lots of Hollywood horror cameos. Kane Hodder, Tony Todd, Tom Holland, Lloyd Kaufman, and others. Mm-hmm. Probably quite a few that I didn't even recognize. And from the trailers, I was expecting something along the lines of Blair Witch... But it's really nothing like that. It's actually pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So was Blair Witch. You said that like you don't like the Blair Witch. It's okay. Yeah, okay. I, I like did not Blair like it the first time I saw it. I thought it was dumb. <clears throat> I got a headache from the shaky cam. Hmm. In retrospect, I've gotten used to shaky cam because everything's <laughs> got it now. Because it's heavily used. And I, could, I respect it a little more than I used to. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that's our show. Yeah, it is. Thanks for joining us. Stop in at horrorguys.com to read all the reviews, drop us a note, or whatever. 
We've got all our old audio podcasts are on there. All There's a link to all the videos on there. So yeah, if you want to catch up on 78 other episodes, we've got them available. There's even a phone number where you can call and scream if you want to. Nine, well, you yeah, you could. Give us your best horror movie, Scream. Wow. 937-453-1575. I should just make up a number for that one and let people start screaming. 937-453-1575. Horrorguysmail at gmail.com. At HorrorBulletin at Twitter. Now get ready for next week. What are we going to see? Horror movies. Okay. We'll begin with The Creature Walks Among Us. The third three, the third three. creature movie from 1956. Mutant from 1984. Not so well known. Mutant, one word. Mm-hmm. Like Alien from a few years previous. Hmm. It's not the same movie, though. No. Hens of the Ripper from Hammer in 1971. We finally got out in 1970. We're moving to 71. <laughs> and 2011's hit Attack the Block. Well, that should be fun. It stars your, your favorite stormtrooper. John, John Boyega, Boyega, yes, yeah. it does. Mm-hmm. And I think this may have been his first role. I'd never heard of him before this. I don't Maybe. Know if, I don't know if it was his first big one, but you know, it was, it was pre- hey, Well, I think it, it was, was his pre, first big one. Pre-Star Wars, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And now he doesn't have to work anymore if he doesn't want to. No, I bet he's set for life if he wanted to be. Oh, I'm sure bet, anybody I, who sets foot near Star Wars is. I bet we'll still see him in stuff. Stuff. He's he's young, untalented, and I bet he'll be in many things. All right. Yeah. Much if, like if us. He, if he wants to be. Next week. Yeah. See ya. See ya.